Sigma Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. There has been three years of intense collaboration between the EU and the South African Citrus Growers Association, which had resulted in record South African citrus exports as the domestic industry acclimatizes to the EU's controversial citrus black spot measures. And Ian Killian tells us more. The EU was the biggest export market for South African citrus farmers and CBS had been a major challenge for farmers to comply with, says South African Citrus Growers Association CEO Justin Chadwick. The EU is our biggest market. We send 40% of our product there, so it's a really important market for us. And definitely the biggest challenge has been the citrus black spot issue, um, where every year the regulations have increased or the requirements have increased. And as a result, the farmers and the Department of Agriculture, etc., the resources are being very stretched in terms of actually ensuring that we comply with those additional measures um, and that we ensure that our fruit is getting into, into Europe free of, of citrus black spot, which uh, has really been achieved. This year we only had 15 or 2015 we only had 15 interceptions as opposed to 28 the year before that and 35 the year before that. So definitely what the farmers is doing is, is bearing results, um, but it comes at a very high cost. Chadwick stated that together with the Department of Agriculture, industry developed a risk management system whereby many steps were involved to ensure that citrus fruit complied with EU regulation and was free of the disease. With the Department of Agriculture, um, the industry has developed a risk management system. So it's a system that involves a whole number of steps uh, in order to ensure that at the end of the day, the fruit is free of, of the disease. Uh, it starts with registration of orchards and then goes into a whole lot of inspection processes, um, a whole lot of spraying processes, um, a, uh, a early detection uh, process where we dip the um, fruit into a chemical to induce the citrus black spot so we can pick up any latent infections. So it's a very complex system um, and uh, it requires a lot of administration, requires a lot of resources from the farmer and, uh, and from the Department of Agriculture. He noted that it was a very complex system that required a lot of administration and resources from farmers, which was expensive. The risk management system is very costly, so it's, it's a huge expense uh, to actually resource up to meet all those requirements and to ensure that uh, your fruit is inspected in time so that your pack house keeps operating, so that the whole fa farm operations don't come to a halt while while you wait for an inspection process or something like that. So the farmers have had to put in additional resources and equipment and people to ensure that they actually meet these requirements. And it's, the estimate is that it's about a billion rand that is costing this industry a year. Uh, we, we earn about 10 billion rand, so it's almost 10% is going purely uh, towards citrus black spot. That's not only this, the direct cost on the farm and in the port, etc., but also is around diversion of containers, where a container is on its way to Europe, they find citrus black spot in the orchard back here, and then we have to divert that container, which is a hugely expensive uh, process. EU head of delegation to South Africa, Ambassador Marcus Cornaro, said that South African citrus exports to Europe were surging and were at an all-time high. This visit comes at actually a very good moment after two or three years of intensive period of, of collaboration, uh, both with the farmers, uh, with the Citrus Growers Association, uh, but also the Department of, uh, of Agriculture, DAF. And I can actually say that after sort of three years of intensive collaboration, we have, we can say this has been fruitful, in, in the literal sense of, uh, of looking at oranges, uh, fruitful for all, all concerned. Uh, it seems that farmers have responded uh, very well. They got great support uh, from their own citrus growing as association, but also from the Department of Agriculture. And this is where the, the regulatory element meets uh, European uh, phytosanitary uh, standards. And if I were to give you one example, I mean, you will have noticed that the, uh, the exports to, uh, to Europe uh, are again surging and we're actually at an all-time uh, all high. At the same time, uh, my interaction here with, uh, uh, with the farmers have shown that the overall approach to a systemic approach to uh, quality management is benefiting them also on many other parts of the, of the production. Uh, evidently, uh, it's a more competitive market. Uh, so the margins, uh, the father of our host uh, had, uh, had 20, 30 years ago, they're no longer there. So they have to really uh, work hard to, uh, on 4-5% uh, margin. But all of that, I think, is confirmed that uh, if, you, if you put a system in place uh, allowing to comply with regulations of Europe as the main destination of South African fruit, uh, we're actually now in a, in a situation where we can say we have uh, predictability and we have a, a sustainable and, uh, and growing market towards Europe. 
He noted that the reason EU import regulations were so strict regarding citrus fruit was because Europe was also a citrus producing area. We're dealing with a fungus where you're not entirely sure what actually will, will happen and how it could transmute. Um, so it's something where I think quite credibly and, and, and uh, legitimately uh, Europe does not want to uh, import uh, a risk via, via black, uh, black fungus and for that these various regulations uh, are in place. But it also shows that if these regulations are being put in place uh, the risk is, is being able to, to be circumscribed to a, to a minimum, minimum level and uh, still allow us to enjoy, enjoy the fruit coming from South Africa without also uh, bearing the risk of a major infection of our own production. Other news making headlines this week Gauteng reveals potential bidders for 3.5 billion rand Gauteng train rolling stock contracts. Pointing to a sustained increase in ridership figures that continues to place strain on the Gauteng train's limited capacity, Gauteng MEC for Roads and Transport, Dr. Ismail Vadi, has outlined the business case behind the decision to embark on a 3.5 billion rand acquisition of additional rolling stock for the rail network. In terms of our fleet at the moment, we have 86 general coaches and 10 airport service carriages in the fleet. These were to be phased into operation over a 15-year period ending in 2026. So that was the projection and the planning. However, due to the growing demand for how train services, particularly during the morning and evening peaks, we are already experiencing overcrowding. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.